Welcome, welcome back. Bienvenue and all that jazz. It's time to talk about some books. I did not, definitely did not read as much as I had hoped in the month of February. I know everybody and their mom called me out for saying that oh, you have such an ambitious TBR for February and you would be correct. <laughs> so as usual, we'll kind of just run through my monthly stats or the stats that I choose to keep track of at all. And then we'll go into my wrap up going from least fave to favor of the month and then to the graphic novels slash manga at the very end. So stick around if you like the happy things or just watch for the next few minutes if you just want to see me be salty. But before any of that, let's talk stats. So technically speaking, I picked up 15 things this month. However, 10 of those were manga. Four of them were novels that I completed and one of them, you will all be so proud of me, one of them was a DNF because we'll get to it. So in total, I read 4,825 pages, listened to 36 and a half hours of audiobooking, and physically read 11 books, 10 of which were manga, so <laughs> take that for what you will. Read one thing on purely audio, one thing purely on ebook, and two things immersion style. So that pretty much sums up the stats, I think. And I guess I read, 10 of them were YA because I read all YA manga this month. And then the five books that I read were all adult books. And then rating wise, I had one 2.75 star read, one 3.5 star read, five four star reads, two 4.25 star reads, one 4.5 and four five star reads. And all of those five stars were, I think manga, so don't love that for my reading, but it's neither here nor there, and that gave us a total of a 4.25 star average rating, which is not shabby, but I was definitely artificially inflated by reading lots of manga that I was really enjoying. <laughs> so the books were more hit or miss, if you will. So let's just dive straight in to talking about the books themselves. So we'll start with my DNF, or did not finish, and that is The Tyranny of Faith, book two in The Empire of the Wolf by Richard Swan. And here's the deal. I was already, like, kind of lukewarm on The Justice of Kings, which was book one. I thought it was good, but not as amazing as everybody else on the book turnet seemed to think it was. It felt like not enough fantasy, and then since it was really focused on like murder mystery elements in book one, I also, I don't know, the murder mystery wasn't that interesting to me. It was kind of like, I think the suspects were always the suspects. There was never really any twists or turns like, or like, oh, who did what? Like it was never what I wanted from a mystery either. So like, it was just like in this weird middle ground that just didn't work for me and ended up being more of like philosophizing about having this one central figure who is the judge, jury, and executioner all in one known as a justice and is more like philosophical looking at that and less being cool magic mystery that I wanted it to be. So then we got to book two and the first maybe 20% we were really digging deep into this kind of maybe possessed demonic cult situation and that was really exciting but then it like derailed into this like kind of cliched it was like a kidnap story, like a, oh no, we need to find the person that got kidnapped. And it was like for so much of the book. So I got all the way to the 80% mark. And then I was finally just like, you know what? I really, I don't care. And I've put it down and I haven't picked it up in a few days. And it's been great. I've been flying through my current read and it was just bogging me down. So I DNF'd her and goodbye. I'm kind of waiting. I was supposed to be buddy reading it with Elle, but she got sick. So I'm waiting for her to kind of catch up and then let me know if she thinks that that last 20% is worth me spending the two hours I think the ebook predicted, or if I'm just better off without it in my life. So that's my DNF, sorry about it. I know a lot of people seem to be loving it who loved book one, but I don't know. It just feels so meandery and I just wanted the cool necromantic demon cult stuff, not hundreds and hundreds of pages of this kind of boring kidnap plot that really didn't go anywhere. And that's there's some really surprising revolution in the last 20% about that plot line, but with that being said, the next thing on my list is White Noise by Don DeLillo, and I gave this book 2.75 stars, and I just am not a lit fit girly. It just doesn't do it for me. It felt so pretentiously overwritten to me that I just was like, I get that that was part of the point. It was supposed to be this like juxtaposition of this kind of like really formal overwritten style with the mundanity of just regular human existence to kind of really poke fun at the idea that our 
everyday behaviors like going to the grocery store are just silly everyday things we take so seriously. But then part two was weird and kind of boring and part three just really went off the rails and like if you want more spoilery thoughts I think Elle, Sean, her husband, and I will be doing some kind of live show about that book hopefully with spoilers so stay tuned i'll post about it on my community tab if you want to hear more thoughts about white noise but like my goodness was that not the book for me <laughs> and then since we're already just having all the hot takes today i finished books 13 and 14 of the wheel of time so that is towers of midnight and a memory of light and they were both fine I thought that The Gathering Storm was great, so I was really excited going into Towers of Midnight, but then Towers of Midnight was, with the cover, teasing a plotline that we have had in kind of the works for like, I don't know, seven books probably at this point, and just how long it took us to get there was really frustrating. It felt like just a lot of filler middle book syndrome, which is really not what you want to feel when you're reading book 13 of a 14 book series. Middle book syndrome is not the descriptor you're, I'm assuming, going for. So like, it was fine. And then we got to A Memory of Light and A Memory of Light, my goodness, was like, it felt like the fan service that I never wanted. So I get that I'm not the biggest fan of The Wheel of Time. And so maybe people who were waiting for A Memory of Light for a long time or whatever, just got everything that they had wanted. But he was doing like random callbacks to information from book like two that just felt kind of irrelevant to the overall plot. And because we spent so much time focused on the battle sequences for, I don't know, probably like six or seven hundred pages of this 900 page book, that the smaller moments and the character moments got kind of lost in the shuffle. And then what really got sacrificed was any kind of falling action. So once we finished and there was conclusion to the epic conflict, we really didn't get to see where anybody ended up or how the world ended up. We didn't get to see anything. And maybe that's just because I know that especially in book one, The Wheel of Time was really like an homage to The Lord of the Rings. And The Lord of the Rings, the last like 40% of the third book is falling action. It's after we've dealt with the ring. So it's just like... I kind of wanted some of that. I wanted to see what happens next. And I get that some of the deal with the Wheel of Time is that the nature of time is cyclical, so these things have happened before, and this is a turning of the wheel, not the turning of the wheel, and so this is an end, not the end. But it just left me overall feeling kind of like melancholy about how like what was the point of anything that we just went through for 14 books. So I don't know, I'm still on the fence of like, do I think it was worth it? I, I don't know. And I know that Angela from Literature Science Alliance, Stephanie from Miss Richards Reads, and I will be having a spoilery live show when Stephanie finishes book 14. So stay tuned for that probably in the last week maybe of March. So if you want my spoilery thoughts on the whole series, then you can check it out there. But yeah, so far I'm still really on the fence. And if you really want me to do like a, a Wheel of Time retrospective on this three-year journey and whether or not I would recommend it for readers today, let me know and I can start kind of collating my thoughts to put into some kind of cohesive form to try to do it justice, but I'll only do it if like a few people are interested in doing that or interested in watching that. So yeah, I mean, I did it. I finished my three-year journey and finished all 14 books plus the prequel of The Wheel of Time, which is wild. But yeah, not the ending that I had totally hoped for, but I'm also not mad. So take that for what you will. And then the last book that I finished this month was Fairlane. This is book two in the Rise and Fall series by Michael J. Sullivan, which if you don't know is the prequel. I don't know, it's very convoluted at this point. So publication order wise, he released the Ryuria Revelations, which is probably the book that you've all seen with kind of like the yellow border at the bottom, Theft of Swords, bind up of two books, original series with Royce and Hadrian, Buddy Cop, shenanigans. Then he wrote a prequel about their story of how they met and came to be the buddy cop duo that was known and loved and that is the Ryuria Chronicles. And then he jumped back 3,000 years to make the Legends of the First Empire to fill in the lore of his world about how that empire that is referenced in Ryuria rose and fell, I'm assuming. And so we really see the beginning of that in the Legends of the First Empire of all of the people and events that catalyzed the beginning of this empire. And now he is currently working on a trilogy of standalone-ish novels where we are doing what he's calling the rise and fall. So we're seeing different snapshots of people in the history of this empire. And so in book one, Nolan, we were still kind of dealing with the direct descendants of the people that we knew from the legends of the first empire. 
Now, book two, Fairlane, is a thousand years after Nolan, and so we are much more removed. And I think some of the joy of the rise and fall is really just seeing how the events that took place start to get twisted. What was known, or what we know actually happened from reading, reading the legends of the First Empire, is already being twisted even a hundred to a thousand years later. So I can only imagine when I get to Ryuria that just <laughs> the facts will be so wrong. One second. So everybody's favorite needy princess was screaming for attention, so here she is. So yeah, I mean, we're just really starting to see how things have been so twisted and how whole characters have been forgotten, genders have been morphed by political ideologies, and just, it's just fascinating the way that he is showing how history is really written by the victor, which I just think is so kind of a cool and clever, like, subtext to have to your series that I haven't seen in other series before. And so I'm really appreciating for that. And I really enjoyed Nolan, but then Feraline, I don't know. It felt kind of Tomb raider -y with that kind of cliched protagonist of the super kind of rough around the edges female who just takes no nothing from nobody and just meh, 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 snuck, 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 snuck. And like, we never really got to peel back the layers and get to know her beyond the facade that she put forth. And so like, it was kind of hit or miss for me. And the ending was definitely not what I had anticipated from Michael J. Sullivan's books. But yeah, I'm not mad at it. It was a fun time and I can't wait to read the the third and final installment of the Rise and Fall Esther Haddon, which is coming out this year. So I would highly recommend reading any of Michael J. Sullivan's works. You can be a rebel like me and read things in a completely in-world chronological order. I'll let you know how that goes once I read Esther Haddon and then Chronicles and then Revelations. I hope it keeps being such a fun time, but we'll see. Or you could always read Publication Order, whatever. You do you, but you should definitely be checking out Michael J. Sullivan. And if you don't love the smaller in scope kind of buddy cop duo of Ryuria, I would still highly encourage you to check out Legends of the First Empire because it was such a good time. But that does it for the actual full length novels that I read in the month of February. The rest of the month I read 10 manga. So I read volumes six through 10 of both Witch Hat Atelier by Komome Shirahama. And then I read volumes six through 10 of Yona of the Dawn by Mizuho Kusanagi. And they were just both fun for different reasons. I would say that Yona of the Dawn feels very much an element of its time. I think it was originally released in the early 2000s or got started in the early 2000s in Japan and then it was sent into the US market by Viz Media in the 2016, 2017, somewhere in there. So like five, six years ago. And it feels very early 2000s anime. There are kind of stereotypical characters and but it's like a fun fantasy adventure time so I'm just kind of going along with the flow I think on average I give most of the volumes anywhere from like three and a half to four stars all the way up to 4.25 stars for some of the volumes that I found more exciting and yeah so I don't know it is kind of this tale of this princess who has a huge upset to her life and kind of gets thrust out into the kingdom and is now traveling around her kingdom. And yeah, I mean, I really don't know what else to say. It's kind of a almost slice of lifey feeling. I really don't know what the meta plot is going to be. I assume that she wants her thrown back. I don't know. We'll find out. And it's just a fun cast of characters kind of coming together, going on random adventures. It's not going to be some big sweeping epic tale, at least not yet, but I think there are like over 30 volumes available now. So maybe that will change, but I don't know. And then for Witch Hat Atelier, I am caught up to what is currently available. Volume 11 will be coming out this summer, and it is phenomenal. <laughs> it mixes these nods to classic manga and anime that I know and love with a really gorgeously detailed art style that doesn't even really look like... I think we all know the early 2000s look of manga and anime drawings with like the pointy nose, the pointy chin, the kind of spiky hair. Which Hatelia just has a more realistic style, kind of fused with that traditional manga style, and it just looks gorgeous. It has some of the whimsy of something that you would expect from like a Studio Ghibli. So if you really like Spirited Away and Studio Ghibli, then I think you should definitely check out Witch Hat Atelier. And then as you get further along in the plot, there are some really dark, very dark moments, especially in these later volumes, volumes like nine and ten. There are moments that was like, oh my god, <laughs> like I did not expect it to go there, but mixed with that like whimsy cuteness and just this like adorable wholesome cast of characters that you just want to like cuddle like a little group of ducklings it's just magic 
And of course, I picked it up because my friend Elle has been shouting about it and she was not wrong. So if you are somebody who's been curious to try manga and you don't know where to start because it's all overwhelming because they're all gigantic series, I think Witch Hat is very accessible as an entry point into this art form because there are only 10 volumes available. Each volume takes you maybe 30 or 45 minutes to get through. So like reading all 10 volumes is kind of like the equivalent of reading one regularly length regularly lengths. Yes, I guess that's what we're going with today. It's so good though. Just buckle up. And just if you think that it's just gonna be cutesy, you're fooling yourself. <laughs> but that concludes everything that I managed to get through in the month of February because my brain would rather just play a bunch of video games. And I didn't read a whole lot. I started writing my thesis. We're maybe close to the halfway point or a little bit more than that of my first draft of my whole thesis. So hopefully this month I can push through and finish a first draft of my whole thesis and then just be in editing mode for the next month. And then it'll be time to defend. And it has been a time. And my brain currently is just really into fun escapist fantasy reads, the same thing that I got fell in love with the genre for. And so that's kind of where I've been sticking lately and I'm just thriving in my lane. But if you want to talk to me about any of the books that I did read, please feel free to talk to me in the comments down below. Or if you want to let me know your favorite book of the month. And if you want to leave just an emoji, leave like a wizard or witch emoji to go for Witch Hat Atelier because oh, it's so good. And I hope more people will read it. But that will do it for today's video. So without further ado, please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you'd like to see more bookish shenanigans like this from moi. Other than that, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!